What's up? Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, welcome to another. Okay, wait. Before we start, I think someone has. Yeah, pay your electric fan is noisy. <laughs> um, but yes, hello everyone. Welcome to another session of our mini sessions. We are now at episode twenty-two, I believe, and. This time we have a special guest joining us tonight. Uh, we'll try to do this maybe every month. Invite someone else that's not us, in case you're tired of the same faces already. But <laughs> but tonight uh, we have Koya Francis Alturas joining us. So, you Francis, since uh, you're new here in the stream, maybe we can start with you introducing yourself quickly. Oh. Hi everyone! Th thanks for uh, inviting me here in the channel, Arnel. Um, it's a bit, it's an it's an honor. Um, so I'm Francis. Uh, I run a digital product design agency, Abstract at PH. Um, other than that, I'm a designer, and I used to write a lot of front end code, but not so much anymore. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, I also like uh, organizing events um, revolving around front-end development, um, design, uh, UI, and UX. And yeah, I mean, other than that, um, I also enjoy playing video games with my four-year-old toddler who play a lot of Mario. So yeah, I think that's what's going on for me right now. Cool. Thank you, yeah. And we're also glad that you could join. Um, Mario is not just for toddlers, by the way. We have grown up friends who play Mario right now beside me. Uh, anyway, uh, so we haven't really thought how we're going to do this, but the plan for tonight is we will be sharing about our Mac or like machine setups in general. So we'll just get right into it. Your yeah, Francis, would you like to start? <laughs> All right, sure, sure. All right, cool. So um, uh, can I share my screen? Uh, it, yes, you can. Does it work? All right, cool, cool. Uh, um, there we go. Yep. All right, so um, hi everyone. Here. Cool. So basically, um, today I'm going to be sharing my setup, um, how I um set up our uh, development environment for, but mainly for product designers. So it's a bit um how would i say this it's a bit special because this is geared towards designers who are trying to code and of course um there's that degree of friction that i don't want to make it like too complicated i want to keep it simple and understandable at the same time but it should also be enough dangerous enough for us to uh, collaborate on coding projects. So yeah, let's get started. So you can actually check out uh, Mac setup.xyz. So I wrote this guide initially. Um, I think this is like probably four years old already. I just keep updating it, iterating it. Initially, we used it um, at Sim. Um, I believe they're probably still using it right now. And even some friends, uh, like Justin from Shopify, she also uses this. So it's really, it's really cool. Like a lot of people are using this, and you know, uh, it makes my heart flow. <laughs> so it's originally a fork from this guy, uh, Saurabh. But yeah, I check out his setup. It's mostly uh, built for like backend developers. So I think he's using a lot of Ruby and Python for this one. So yeah, I decided to just uh, create a fork out of it and just um, made it, adjusted it into our needs. So it's written in the intent of setting up a UI development environment for product designers. And you know we're, we're sharing it to everyone. Um, so I think this came about because I started with um, with a boring terminal, and I saw my developer friends have this very cool flashy effects and what whatnot. And I think it was a rabbit hole for me, starting from that point on. And I got addicted just trying to customize my terminal, 
how do I add those autocompletes and all those plugins? So yeah. So if you're a designer who wants to flex how cool your terminal would look like, so this might be for you. <laughs> all right, so let me start. So preparing your Mac, I think one of the things that I always notice is that I have this uh, kernel task thing on the processes. Sometimes it hits like 80 to 90%. And it's usually the uh, machine throttling from Mac OS. Like uh, if it doesn't want the CPU to work so hard, so it doesn't get hot. So it runs this uh, process to slow down your CPU. So it means like uh, thermal paste is probably hard, hardened, or there's just too much dust. And when I see this, when I check out, so this is actually iStats that I'm using. Uh, that's usually the time that I just open my laptop and just cleaning, um, cleaning the dust out of it. And just sometimes I do, re I do replace the thermal paste as well. So yeah, I actually have some recommended tools here as well. So I'm using the Xiaomi Wow Stick, and I really like it because it's so um, versatile. Like so many screws that like, you can use, and I use an air duster because it's just convenient to use an air duster. Um, some thermal paste replacement, if you want to do that, I usually do. I do it rarely, like every three years, two to three years. I'm using an old 2015 Mac, uh, 16 inch, so that's like six years now. So yeah. Pretty good. Um, I use a Grizzly Cryonaut, so you can actually you can order all these things in Lazada or Shopee. So uh, it won't be a problem for you to look out look for this stuff. Um, all right. So probably another not a lot of people would agree with me, but I think the first time that I did a Mac OS upgrade was in 2013. I think that was Mavericks in the Mavericks era. And one thing that I noticed, like two continuous Mac OS updates, I noticed a slight uh, performance um, degradation. So I decided to do a fresh install. And that was the time when Disk Maker X was actually really good for creating like these bootable installers until they discontinued it recently during the Big Sur up um, Mac OS. And then I actually had like some instructions here on how to do that. So it's quite simple. You just need a 16 gig thumb drive and run this uh, code here. I mean, on the terminal, this command on the terminal to create a fresh install of your OS. So yeah, one thing that I usually do this like every end of the year. Uh, Mac OS usually releases a new OS. They announce it around September, I guess, and they release it in November. And I don't usually update because there's a lot of kinks and um, it's not 100% stable, probably. I mean, for a light user, probably it's good. But for development work, I don't want it to break any workflow that I already have. So I do a fresh install every end of the year during our break, uh, every end of December, rather. And I actually have a checklist here, like the desktop folder, whatever, and whatnot here. Mm. But I think one of the things that I could do to eliminate like checking out every folder is that I sync a single folder that has all my files in Google Drive. And that allows me to just virtually use any laptop and just sync um, my drive there so I can access my files everywhere. Um, I think now with the advent of um design files being in the cloud because i'm using figma uh code is in repositories it's in github um probably what's lacking is to have like even your development environment to be in the cloud or something like that so it allows you to just virtually use any computer <laughs> and start working so if your laptop gets fried or gets thrown or something happens uh, it won't be much of an issue. So yeah, cloud storage, uh, I'm using Google One because it was the cheapest option uh, a year ago until Apple iCloud actually had some adjustments here. So they're trying to be competitive with the price. Um, they're offering um, 200 gig for 149 a month. That's actually pretty good uh, for Google One. 
I think I'm using 200 gig as well. So 149. Oh, they actually have the same price now. I used to be on Dropbox. I think it was too expensive, really. Uh, I tried it for like six six months and it didn't just work out for me. This was before Google One was um, introduced. So when I heard about this, I immediately switched. So yeah, um, there are some instructions here and how to reinstall the whole thing. Um, kick out a guide. So yeah, hit next. So yeah, so basically, basically like this is just some instructions on how we set up our machine. So we do Xcode, we do X you need you need the Xcode command line tools before anything else. Um, I even have my system preferences here. So this is super subjective, but um, it's up to you. So I usually like my theme dark. Um, even my dock and menu bar. I mean, I don't usually use it because I use a keystroke launcher. Uh, this is Ueli. So one of the things I really like about it is just how, oops, where is it? All right, anyways, one of the things I really like about it is the customize is its customizability uh, compared to the other things, but we'll get back to that. So the, the dock doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I don't really use the dock. Uh, so I hide it with command option B all the time. Um, Siri, I don't use Siri. I, I haven't met anyone who used Siri on their laptop. Uh, I only use it for my phone just to give me like reminders to uh, time, actually timer, just timers, like when I'm cooking or doing something. Um, keyboard, trackpad, all right, it's nothing special there. Finder, mm -mm -mm. yeah, nothing. Yep, nothing super specific here. Right, let's go next. So I use a package manager. Uh, this is something that I, I try to introduce with the designers. It's a bit foreign to them, but it really makes updating everything a breeze. So um, of course I show an instruction like how to install Homebrew, how to use it. And one of the things that I really like about it, was so I'm using Hyper my terminal, which I'm going to explain later on. OK, why is it not showing up? This is super weird. Oh, there it is. All right, probably it's a bit delayed. So I just immediately like brew list. It's going to show me all the packages I have. Um, all the apps I have installed, it's also here. And the reason why I use Homebrew to manage my packages and softwares, I mean, the apps rather, is because I disable auto updates by default because I don't want anything to be updated while I'm working. So it kind of breaks your workflow when you're in the middle of something. I usually do it, update things like every weekend. So I'm actually supposed to update things today, which I haven't. So I just run this command brew, uh, see you. FA, and then it's going to show me a list of, oh, there we go. So yeah, I haven't checked it out. It's updating homebrew. But yeah, uh, we can go back to that. It's, it's probably going to take some, some time. So I recommend using a package manager, homebrew, and then I introduce them how to use tasks. So basically, um, the apps, uh, instead of using the App Store, although there's a caveat, not all apps is available in CAST, so there are some limitations. And yeah, actually, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud is one of those limitations. So all right, to our favorite part, terminal setups. So before, I used to actually have a terminal setup. Um, I use uh, iTerm2 and on a Cobalt theme. I'm not sure if I actually still have it. Yep, I don't have it anymore. I don't use iTerm anymore. But this was really cool. Uh, we've been using it. I think I've been using it for the past like five years, I guess. It was four years ago. And um, there is a very good course um, by West Boss. So West Boss is a developer who has some videos on, on the terminal, on React, and whatnot. 
But he has a very good course. Um, I think it's free. Terminal West Boss course. And I usually let the designers go through this one. And it allows them to be dangerous enough just to go around the terminal and use like basic commands like navigating folders, being able to use Git, uh, remove this, copying things. So, all right, this is actually the right site. Command line power user .com. All right. So this is uh, what I actually let the designers go if they're new to the terminal. And usually after this, they get proficient enough so they would be comfortable working around with Git. So yeah, it's pretty short. Uh, you can actually finish this in like under an hour. So yeah. Um, other than that, here are some recommendations, some themes that I have actually. And right now, um, I'm using Hyper. So when Hyper was released a couple of years ago, I didn't really like it because it was web-based and it was super slow. And I think the latest iteration, I think this is Hyper 3. Yep, it is Hyper 3. So it's super fast. Like, I didn't notice anything. Um, it's not as sluggish at, as it is it was before and setting up is a breeze i basically just have to run like a couple of commands to have everything running um installing a theme uh, i love this theme hyperstasy it's just one line uh installing the shell shell is ready installed by default since uh mac os catalina so of course um you need to have that oh my zsh because it just gives us that degree of customizations and plugins to work around the terminal. And I'm using Pure as a prompt. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, I like it because it's super clean and it's fairly new. Oh, actually it's not, <laughs> it's eight years ago here. <laughs> but yeah, it's always updated. And this is, it's, it's pretty, it's minimal. So I don't have those flashy, whatever things. So. I'm trying to be a little minimalist now. And yeah, it has everything that I need to work with Git. And yeah, it's just very straightforward. And there are just two main uh, ZSH plugins that I really need. Um, I actually tried exploring around fish, um, but I was able to emulate a fish-like experience in ZSH and I don't want to dabble in another shell anymore. So I use this one, VSH auto suggestions and VSH syntax highlighting to emulate um, fish. Of course, there's probably a lot of different more features in fish that isn't in ZSH, but these are the main things that I really like about fish. And I have that in ZSH, so I would just stick to ZSH now. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that's for the terminal here. All right, so going back here, so you can see um, I have 25 apps that I haven't updated here. So I disable auto updates by default. And if I hit uh, yes, it would just automatically update everything. And yeah, I just don't have to deal with these things on a daily basis. So something breaks or whatever, um, at least I know I still have the weekend to check it out. So yeah, that's how I don't break my workflow. All right, so uh, terminal packages. So nothing super uh, specific here. I think these are just some recommended packages that I have. I use Trash, Z, I actually like Z so much. Uh, Z allows me to just present on some folders, for example, um, LS, uh, ID, all right, let's check out Git folder. So I need to go to the Git Gap QR um, folder here. So, all right, let me just go back here. And I'm from the root, and I recently visited that. So I just need to type Z and probably type good. And then it automatically. Um, it automatically like redirects me in this uh, directory. So it searches for, it's, it's just a cool way to jump on 
frequently and recently visited folders. Uh, how it work, how they do it, I'm not really sure, but I, this is really like super uh, helpful, especially when you're jumping in between projects. Um, it's quite helpful. Um, YouTube, download, package, of course. <laughs> Why not? Speed test, uh, just a geeky way for you to check out your, uh, your to do a speed test. Um, other than that, okay, so um, there's a command line for the Mac App Store. So I think I previously mentioned that not all apps are available in CAST. So uh, the way you use it, uh, it's here. Um, so this allows me to download that I already have in the app store. So yeah. All right, Wi-Fi password. Yeah, there are times where uh, people ask me what's the password in the Wi-Fi I'm connecting to. And it's just so much easier to just open the terminal, uh, the Wi-Fi password. Um, all right, it asks me for teaching, but all right, later. Um, so much easier to do this rather than opening up settings, going out to, to your keychain, uh, looking for the Wi-Fi name. It eliminates all those steps. Three, yeah, this is just RT, IP. All right, this is just a cool kid thing that I like. Um, uh, yes. I just type RT. Oh, without, there we go. And it just basically shows you like the steps your machine, wait, it looks weird. Oh, there we go, yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, nothing really super important here. So Git, how do we set up Git? Uh, there is a set of instructions here. Um, you can go through that, uh, SSHTs. Uh, so this is helpful as well for designers since it's, for, it's their first time understanding this and then we try to add them to our github group our github organization rather and then i have a universal git ignore here uh, of course we know git ignores are super subjective depending on the project and you know your setup but basically if you're starting from nothing uh, this is a good boilerplate that you can use and yeah i think there's a lot yeah actually that is maintained by GitHub. Yep, yep, yep. There are a lot of different Git ignores here. So you can check it out. And it's under GitHub, Git ignore. So uh, yeah. Okay, so going back here, code editor setup. All right, so I think previously we used Sublime. Um, I think that was before visual code came along. And I still retain the setup here. Uh, nobody really uses this anymore, but I, I just kept this here. I'm probably going to remove it. So here's like a default um, user settings that we have. But let's just skip that and go to visual code. So here are some of the extensions that I recommend. So since I switched from Sublime to uh, visual code, I actually uh, my, like my my hand automatically like remembers the the shortcuts that I did in Sublime. So if you're that kind of guy who came from Sublime and you don't want that steep learning curve, you can immediately install this extension and everything just works. Um, for the theme that I use, uh, One Dark Pro. Um, sometimes I'm using Material. Um, another extension here. Yeah, it's pretty basic. Just all the renames like HTML tags. So you rename one tag, it automatically renames the third tag as well. Um, you have CSS peak, uh, allows you to pick on CSS classes. Um, all right. Yeah, file utilities, just a way to, to manage your files, rename, move, delete. All right, so yeah, IntelliSense for CSS, because we deal with a lot of CSS. And yeah, I actually like installing the material icon theme as well, because it, give, it gives this um, file some icons on their side, so it's pretty cool. Um, Prettifier, of course, um, that when we hit save, it automatically formats code 
and this depends as well on uh, where you're using it. Uh, SAS, of course, we already have a built-in support for SCSS, I believe, but this one would add support for SASS. So it's just the syntax, really. I haven't tested this one, though. Maybe they changed this, but yeah. Uh, of course, Thailand uh, for linting your CSS and SAS. And yeah, this is pretty nifty. Trading spaces. So um, it would delete all those um, trading spaces you have in your code. Keep it clean. But you actually have pretty fire, so you probably don't need this anymore. But yeah, I mean, it's handy to have that. Um, preferences, so yeah. I'm using Dank Bono as my um, uh, typeface for coding. And it's quite old, I think this was around 2016 or 17. Um, I like it because it looks pretty cool. I think they already removed it. I mean, they used to have a page. Yep, and most importantly, it's monospace. I actually like the ligatures it have. So you can see here, like look your words. Okay, come on. <laughs> Daddy? Okay, yes? Go away. Come on, come on, you listen. Yeah, that's your friend. Say hello to everyone. Hello. <laughs> hello, say hi to come. the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, later. I'm gonna let you type on the keyboard later. Not now, not now. No, no, no. Okay. Okay, how about here? You, here, you type on the keyboard. Uh all right. <laughs> so yeah, so these are the preferences. You can check it out. Um oh here, here's actually a good article why I'm using Dank Mono. Um, it's aesthetic enough to have attention to the detail. So, wow, that's something. So 2018, yeah, we had this 2018. I think a lot of people at SIF were using this as well. Um, let me see. What are the noticeable things we have here? Uh, yep, yeah. looks pretty cool. I mean, I'm not really like super snob <laughs> on what I think I'm using, but I just like how it looks, especially the you can see the dish, the class, the extends like it has its own ligature, so it helps you visually to look at like uh, differentiate these uh, keywords. Uh, aside from the color. Okay, thank you. So going back, um, preferences. Yes. yes, preferences. Text stack. So yeah, this is kind of subjective depending on your text stack. So it really depends on the theme. Um, one time we had to install Ruby because I was, I was collaborating with a Ruby project. And um, of course, Python. Uh, Google app, Google Cloud. This was um, during the Google app engine days when I used to uh, help a lot with uh, front end development and SaaS. And this really depends on um, like with the team you're working with. So yeah, so super subjective. All right, package Yes, I'm looking. So of course, uh, Node, Yarn. I mean. Um, I used to uh, use Gulp a lot before. Uh, I actually have like a boilerplate on Gulp, but unfortunately, um, I I'm trying to move away from Gulp, so probably more NPM and Yarn now. So yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on to everyone's favorite part, which is the apps. So let me check here. The apps. <laughs> All right. Design tools. So a lot of people would actually check this out. Put it there, put it there. And uh, 
here are the essentials. So this is actually based on the survey we had. I mean, the survey that I joined, which was UX tools. And um, this is actually a very cool resource that you can check. So there are some responses from different countries. Um, hey, can you, <laughs> what? That's seven dollars. <laughs> Don't touch it. That's dirty. Okay. So um, um, some brainstorming apps like they're using Miro, Whimsical, um, different kind of tools. So I actually have it here. And um, yeah, for the design tools, uh, I think a lot of people are using Creative Cloud, like Adobe. So just the basics: uh, Photoshop, Illustrator. And uh, UX tools, Miro, um, Mural. So, yeah. Hey, look, L let me show you something. <laughs> here, wait, wait, wait. Oh, here, here, here. <laughs> there, bring that there. So, knock yourself over. <laughs> okay. So, um, a lot of people are using Miro for uh, brainstorming, um, using design prints. Miro is really good. Um, Mural is like Miro, it's an alternative. So currently we're using Figma uh, for our UI design tool and it really helps with us how we work right now. I mean, it's remote, um, it's real time. So you see everyone's cursor moving around while we're changing. A sketch, we used to use sketch. Uh, it was my favorite tool actually. And have this different, was swell Adobe XD. I tried it, but I don't really use it uh, a lot. I tried Envision Studio, which was good, but it was promising during that time, but it didn't really fly. Like, I, I don't know what happened. And some different tools like Blender, 3D tools. Oh, there's actually a version control tool for Sketch. I have it installed. Um, Zeppelin which is uh, a good, all right. Yeah, let me actually check. Yeah, I actually don't have these things installed. But anyhow, I'm using icon managers. Um, I used to love icon jar, but it's paid now. So <laughs> yeah, it expired my trial period. So right now I'm using a free one. It's called icon set. Um, sometimes I don't use this anymore because there are some icon sets in, in Figma that you can download as a resource. But yeah, basically I just have everything here and it just makes things easier. I'm just, just trying to search for like, um, home and it shows me all home related things. So this is actually found awesome by the way. Uh, just makes it super easier. So currently I have, I used to have a lot here. I'm just too lazy to add the different sets. So I'm using Font Awesome a lot and Feather. Oh, I don't have Feather here. Oh, there, this is actually Feather. I should probably delete that and rename this with Feather. So if you wanna check Feather out, it's free open source. Uh, you can check it out here. Just do a Google search, Feather icons. And there you go. And you can probably, you can also adjust the size, uh, the width, even the colors. So this is pretty nifty to have. Um, okay, so there's also Nucleo. Web font generator. All right, so if you have those typefaces that you usually download for uh, Google fonts, and of course you wanna uh convert it into a uh web font so a lot of there are a lot of online services but you know it's it's a lot of clicks really for me to go google then open and upload file and all the back and forth so i just use font plop let me check if it's installed yep it's installed so i just open up font plop hello where are you there yeah, so I haven't actually opened this in a long time. And it just got installed. So okay, there it goes. So for instance, let me just go to find oops, 
we just go to font profits. And let's look for a typeface here, any random one. Uh, user uh, Roboto. Okay, let's try Roboto this one, Photos Lab. So for instance, I have this one and I want to convert that into a, uh, well, web font. I just open font lab and just immediately drag it here, drop it, and where did it go? Here we go. And I think it's done. It shows up here in the desktop. And you have this things that you primarily need. And I just, um, let me open Sublime. Fast. Um, oh, you can see my notes from <laughs> Dota. <laughs> That's ES. This is for Storm. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you can even see like the code pre-generated there. You just do a copy paste and you're done. So that's how I use font plop. Um, other than that, image optimization. So image optim, optimize. Uh, there are some times that I need to compress uh, images. So I just see this one. I think this is, yep, just installed as well. Um, and so let me do a screenshot here. There you go. And I want to compress this. I just drop it here. And then it automatically does the work for me. Um, of course, you shouldn't be doing this a lot on the web. Uh, you can take advantage of build tools to do this automatically for you. But for some, for some those instances that you just want to compress manually, you can use this pretty nifty tool as well. Um, prototyping tool. So yeah, principles, lintel frame. Font managers. Hmm. So I actually tried using font managers and I still end up going back to the default one installed Mac OS on font book. I have this different thing here, font base. Let me open it. But I haven't really used it. So I don't know. This is pretty subjective. Um, I'll, I'll leave that to you. Check this out. Type face. Yeah. What's the, the difference? Uh, yep. It's paid. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the major difference. It's paid. Uh, 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 uh. All right, never any ways. Let's proceed. Mm -hmm. Developer tools. All right, so nothing super hardcore, but just enough for us to do our work. Um, all right. So all of the work that we do, just mainly front end, static site generators like Tekio or some WordPress before CMS. So I think for the terminal hyper is enough. Um, I used to hang out a lot in Lime Chat. So Lime Chat, Lime Chat is an IRC. I haven't opened it for a while. So yep, I am usually on the free node server. Let me check. Yep, here. And I usually joined the channel WordPress before when I was doing a lot of WordPress work and this just allows me to um yeah, yeah i gotta register that's why i couldn't look up uh didn't check my id oh yeah. it worked yep it still is <laughs> it still works so i just asked stupid questions here um for me to get flamed by the really smart guys here but you know it helps me learn when i was trying to learn wordpress like so and stuff here. So yeah, it has a lot of different channels as well. Um, Gitter, I haven't used that anymore. Spectrum, they're actually shutting down Spectrum. And I think they're shutting down Spectrum to give way to GitHub communities, I think. Uh, 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 yes, Spectrum is using GitHub. Let me check. Um, yep. So yeah, they're actually bringing it. Yep, GitHub communities. I was right. All right. So that's why they're shutting down Spectrum. Going back here, um, MAMP, uh, if you do WordPress, uh, Quiver, Quiver. 
So I actually like Quiver. I put all my notes there um, until Notion came along. So I switched Notion. So uh, I actually have different notes here. This is very archaic. It's super old. Uh, what is this things here? Yeah, I don't even remember anymore. Actually, I actually have notebooks, JS. Oh, by JS notes, CSS, code snippets. Yep, yep. See, 2018, it's super old. It's like 2017. This is like four years ago, dev guides. Yep, pretty old. I even have like some DNS guides here. And this is like uh, 2016. So yeah, I used to write all my notes here to develop my like, snippets. And I like it because it was marked down and it has code formatting built in. So. And it's super fast too. But I'm still in the crossroads of what to use for like like a snippets manager. I really do not like personally do not like like web uh, tools like integrated here because I don't want to open that. And I want a native app. So if you have some recommendations, just let me know. <laughs> still using this one for code. Uh for my notes, I'm using Notion. Um Lepton, yes, for GitHub, yes. I haven't actually used this a lot. SQL Pro for the database when you're doing a lot of database manipulations in WordPress. FTP clients, transmit, love transmit. Text editor, of course, this code, browsers, Docker, or why not? Okay, so I think the last part of my setup would be to discuss about productivity tools. Uh, handbrake, it's a good video converter. Paste, so uh, yep, I actually like Paste because it allows, it's like a clipboard that I have here in Mac OS, so it allows me to quickly go back. So there are like funny things that I've been copy pasting um, throughout. So I, if I copy this one, copy, and then I copy this one, essentials. So I want to go back to the previous thing that I copied. I just open paste and here it is. Uh, works with images as well. Let me do a screenshot on this one here. Let me copy this one here. Let me open paste quickly and it's there. I can easily I'll go back to it. Um, sometimes I do quick notes here. So for Mac OS, here are some like funny quick commands that I have here that I don't remember, but I find useful. So I just put them here as well. You even have code. Yeah. You even have some links there too. Anyways, yeah, that's Rocket. I mean, that's paste. Rocket allows me that Slack-like experience of entering emojis. Actually, you can do it uh, natively in Mac. I just forgot the short key for that, the shortcut key for that. But I like how Slack is. I basically just write colon and just paste something like Rocket, just paste Rocket. Then it places the emoji there. So it's pretty neat. Works everywhere. Uh, of course. Um, so how about in subline friends? It's like you're coding and like uh, you don't want that. So does it work? Nope, it does not work. So you can actually set up in preferences so it doesn't disturb you. Uh, okay, so quick. There we go. Right. Raindrop that IO. So this is actually where I have a lot of my bookmarks. I used to have it on Chrome, but um, I went in an external tool, so I have all my bookmarks here. And you can see I have like 57 links unsorted, <laughs> which I need to sort. And you can have, you can see all the different links that I have saved here, uh, of personal pages, playbooks, design systems, uh, design in general, typography and whatnot. So yeah, that's Raindrop. Uh, App Cleaner. Yeah, it's quite simple. It just basically when you delete an app in Mac OS, there are still some preferences being saved. So uh, if you want that removed, you just open Finder, go to applications, and just drag things over there. And it's gonna clean everything for you. Crisp, crisp. So I'm using Crisp right now, um, mainly because my fan is noisy. Uh, there are some chickens when I'm working from home. And it just reduces that noise. So yeah, 
It's paid, but weekly it gives me 120 minutes. So I use it wisely in important meetings. If I'm meeting with a team, like they're all right with the chickens, but I'm meeting with clients, I usually turn this on. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, caffeine. So I, I think I have it here. Let me check. Okay. Oh, no, I don't, don't have it here. So sometimes when I'm downloading things and I don't want to turn off the computer, I have caffeine here. Uh, here's a cup here and I just toggle it actually on and off. Not sure why the icon is messed up, but yeah, it's a quick toggle to prevent the machine from turning off. Effortless, so this is one very good app. So when I'm working, uh, we work in two hour, two, three hour blocks, right, for our sprints. And usually I name the tasks here. Right, is it opening, effortless, what happened? Effortless. Let me check. Yes, it is here. So let me just switch that there. Um, I I do a quick add on a on a wait wait. Let me open the list so and in the list. So usually, what I do, uh, I hashtag um, implement navbar for site one, and I give myself like three hours for 180 minutes. And then I have another task here. Um, uh, refactor file sheets for like 60 minutes. So I, I, I type all the work that I do here. And wait, for this notebook. Yeah, so it shows up here. And it, it shows me a timer. And I like it because it doesn't distract me. It's always there. And, you know, it actually encourages you to see an, an impending doom of not finishing your task and you see it dropping to zero. So it just keeps me inspired to really finish the task. So that's what I use effortless for to so open the list. If I'm done with that, you say the hashtag and it moves on to the next task. So you can see refactor style sheets. And it's always there, uh, whatever things that I'm using are opening. So it keeps me reminded of what I'm supposed to do so I don't get distracted. All right, so effortless. Flux, so Flux used to be a thing I don't have it installed. It was, it's actually a night shift. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to change it anymore. But basically uh, changing the color of your screen to yellowish to a yellowish tint during the night. So it makes you like sleep early or something like that. But yeah, Daisy Disk, I usually use it when I'm trying to uh, Daisy Disk. I usually use it when I'm trying to clear up space. So yep, I don't have a license for that, but you can use it for free. You just have to wait. Right, let's just open that there while we're waiting. Um, transmission, if you know, you're know you that torrent guy. Uh, Numi, just a quick calculator really. But I don't use it a lot since I can do some calculations on my keystroke launcher. So I just do some math here like 24 times whatever minus whatever. So this is Numi. You can actually do some conversions here. So sometimes I do like what's $50 to PHP. And I'm not sure where he got this number, but yeah, it's one of the use cases that I have for Ruby. Um, Unarchiver, this for Zips. VLC player, of course, uh, Spotify, yeah. Tooth Fairy. So this was before uh, Big Sur implemented this really nifty tool of being able to just quickly connect and disconnect devices here in two clicks. Uh, Tooth Fairy works in the same way, so that makes Tooth Fairy obsolete right away. Before you need to open preferences in Bluetooth and then add things, and then it's a lot of work, and you, I, just, I just didn't want to deal with it, so yeah. Um, reflector, it's like AirPlay for the Mac, so um care binary elements uh, for key it's a keyboard customizer if you want to do vpn i'm using proton geekbench for uh benchmarking um yeah nothing really 
Welly, yeah. So this is the keystroke launcher that I'm using, Welly. And I think one of the things I really love about it is the customization that I can do. And Motoball, it's free. It's cross cross platform as well. It's available in Linux and Windows, I guess. I guess. So there are a lot of things that you can do here. I can enable and disable. I just hated this default spotlight in Mac OS because it shows me a lot of different things. I just wanted to see like some apps during the application search. Like I don't want to see all the emails and all the different files I have in my drive, in my hard disk. So yeah, this is the reason why I'm using Welly. And it's free. Uh, I used to use I used to use Alfred, but it's paid, so I'm trying to move away from that. Uh, screen recorders, cap, cap is really cool. Um, let me just open cap. There we go. I just press this one. And then it just allows me to record a portion of my screen and hit that. And then I can do whatever I want. It automatically starts recording. So yeah, it just stopped that. Um, yep, there it is. So yeah, I can record it to a GIF, MP4, uh, whatever. And let me quit that. So cap, cap, goodbye cap. Uh, Loom, I used to do Loom a lot. Uh, that's how I share check-in asynchronously with uh, clients, like give them updates and show them things. But right now, I don't really use Loom anymore. I think they have a five minute limit right now. It's free though, but it's useful for those quick messages. But you know, if it's useful for you, you can actually pay for it. So yeah, it has some limitations, five minutes. And either you go paid, so you get unlimited. Uh, hmm. So I used to uh, use iStats for like, um, it's kind of fancy things. I mean, quit effortless. But now I'm using stats, which I don't have open. Uh, I'm gonna open a lot of apps here. So well, there we go. Stats, stats, stats. All right, let me just fix that. Mm -hmm. There we go. So um, you can customize it. So you, typically, I would just want to see the network, um, like how, if I'm connected, like how much I'm uploading, downloading, the speed, and just the processes, my CPU, basically. You can do a lot of different things. Uh, these are a lot of the different things that you can customize. So yeah. Uh, 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 calendars, calendars. So my favorite is Fantastical too. And how does it be? Uh, all the other calendars I want, mainly because uh, if someone invites me in for an event, I just look here. I want to check, like, all right, what do I have for this day? And I have it here exactly. And it even gives me the link um, to that meeting. So it's pretty nifty. Uh, if I want to do um, add something, add things here as well. Uh, for example, I have lunch with Arnell uh, in. Ayala, Cebu. Okay, so you can see that autocomplete over there uh, at 9 p.m. on Thursday. Thursday. So it automat it's automatically like it's smart, and I just like it. I just can just immediately add that. It's gonna ping me on Thursday. So yeah. <laughs> All right, NTFS tool. So these two tools are paid. Basically, NTFS tools just allows me. To copy files from NTFS uh, from my Mac to NTFS formatted drives. No way, but, but there's a free no um, printed for that. You can use this one, NTFS 3G. So yeah. Communication, Slack, Zoom, yeah. It's the usual subspects, Discord, Messenger, Telegram, WhatsApp. Password managers, I'm using LastPass because it's free. Fortunately, on March 15, they won't be free anymore. So I'm looking for an alternative for that. I used to do one password, but yeah, they also switched to being a subscription base as well. So not going back to that anymore. Email apps, uh, I'm using Airmail and basically because I like it, <laughs> it just looks better. But Edison is actually pretty good in Spark. So if you're, if you notice this uh, menu bar organizer that I'm using, it's called Vanilla. Uh, it's preferences here. So you can see all the icons here on the left 
I actually hid in that because it looks so annoying. So you can see how it hides. I used to do bartender, but yeah, I mean, bartender spade. This is a free one, dozer. I just didn't like the design, of how it looks like. It doesn't look as sleek as vanilla. So yeah. Cloud storage, yeah, I'm using Google notebooks. I used to be hardcore Evernote user, then switched to Notion because it's easier. Window managed app, so I'm using Rectangle and it allows me to do that with my keyboard, which I actually like so much. Full screen. And you can see that I actually have some spaces in between the screens, and those are just one of the preferences that I set using Rectangle. There are alternatives like man magnet, zoom, and amethyst, which is a tiling window manager. And I find it too difficult to use, <laughs> so I'm using rectangle. Gaming, yeah, of course, Steam for Dota 2. I used to play StarCraft a lot too. Uh, uh, um, so, yeah, I think that, that ends the setup that I have. So, yeah, any uh, anything? You want to ask? <laughs> yes. uh, one thing I get from this session references is that you use a lot of apps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already like opening tabs for ones that I'm going to install. So, um, yes. Uh, first of all, thank you for like sharing this stuff. Uh, I think uh, maybe I I'm just going to tell you, I think you tweeted this guy some time ago, maybe last year. And, yeah. and like I definitely looked at it and then already took some, I mean, already followed some like preferences here. Oh, I never really looked at the apps, so I'm just seeing the apps uh, this evening. So thank you for that also. And Faith, have any questions? <laughs> I think that's it. I think I have to <laughs> change my current setup right now and try those. <laughs> Was but I like really the dunk one. Like okay, I'm gonna try that one. I have a question. To one. Uh, how how often do you update this guide? Uh, I don't know. Once a year, every time a tour <laughs> format. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, this was just updated last. Oh, actually, two months ago, December twenty twenty. So yeah, recently updated. Cool. Yes, I'll definitely yeah. refer back to this every once in a while. Uh, in case you update it. Uh, so, okay, we don't have other questions. So maybe I can also like share a bit of my setup, which is like one tenth of the content that Kuya Francis shared. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So, uh, I think you can see my screen. Okay. So generally, I'm web developer. Uh, I don't use a lot of like design tools. I only use Figma. So Figma is the only thing that I have. And other than that, I use my code editor, which is um, VS Code. I also used to use Sublime Text before. And yes, I use iTerm. Uh, we actually have like a lot of tools that are similar to what your Francis said earlier. Uh, I also use uh, ZSH. But with iTerm, uh, I used Hyper before when I was on Linux. But with Mac, I just I just used iTerm. Uh, I used the um, pure prompt, but I changed the prompt to like an emoji because it's more fun <laughs> than the greater than symbol. Um, other than that, uh, in terms of the app, so uh, what your Francis shared. Um, it's really cool that they're all um, organized into pages. It makes it uh, easier for like teams to browse easily um, the apps that they want. Uh, in my case, I do something diff something else, like something different, but it's because it's only specific to me. I'm the only one who's using my setup, so I think it makes sense. So I actually put all my, all my, how do you call this? All my setup, and a GitHub repo, and I just have scripts to install all of them at once. So, uh, so I here in my GitHub repo, I have a dot files folder, uh, which contains all my config files. So like 
um, get ignores, vim configs, CSS config and stuff. But in addition to that, I have scripts that will install all the tools that I'm going to need. So for example, I'm, I'm on Mac, so I also use Homebrew. Um, some people, some of my friends don't like Homebrew because it keeps breaking some tools a lot. Uh, in my case, not really a big deal for me, so I use Homebrew. And uh, yes, I basically just have a, a bash script that contains all the install commands for all um, the tools that I use. So if let's just go through each of them. So here I, I even included how to install Homebrew, but it's using the Ruby one. Uh, so some tools, some of these I don't even know what are what they are for anymore. Uh, so I have CSH, um, Git, Hub, and Dig. So Hub is like a CLI. It's like it's like it's, just, it's sort of like an extension to Git with extra commands specific to GitHub. Uh, Tig is another way to view your Git log. So if, for example, here you have a repo, you can run Tig, and you can easily view your git log okay let's try it again git log and the changes there easily so i just like it um ruby and so some of these um tools listed here um, they don't really apply to what i do anymore these days so before i run them i make sure to comment out um, the tools that i don't need so i don't need that anymore um, currently i also also use postgres so i most likely uh, currently in this current setup, I don't have Redis or Mongo, uh, but for me, this just makes it easy to like, uh, before I run them, I just do, do a quick look, remove, I mean, comment out the ones that I don't need and then run the script. So uh, image magic. So I love image magic for like processing images um, with resizing, converting them to different formats. And tree, yeah, Cora Francis already shared it earlier. Um, I don't use this anymore. I don't use this anymore. <laughs> uh, but it's sort of like a cat alternative for the terminal. So uh, we have a cat command, right? Um, you can also use but. I mean, cat allows you to display the contents of the file. But in my case, I use but. OK, I'm not sure what to display. Uh, let's say but in index.html. Uh, it, it, it prints it in uh, like with syntax highlighting. Uh, in fact, I actually alias um, bat to cut, so it always runs by default. Um, HTTP is an HTTP client for the terminal, which is what I use to fetch like um, HTTP APIs for testing. Uh, I don't use that. I don't use Nginx also. I mean, if I use Nginx, I run it through Docker. So yes, that's for home. That's for brew. And let's take a look at the cask, which are like the GUI apps. So some of them, the Francis already showed, um, iTerm. I don't install Sublime anymore because I don't use it anymore. So I only use install VS Code, Atom. Used to use Atom, but not now. Uh, browsers, yes, I tend to install these browsers for testing. And Slack, of course, Skype. Now I don't have Skype. Spotify and VLC. Uh, I used to use Alfred, but uh, since I updated to Big Sur, I decided like, okay, maybe I'll give Spotlight another chance. So that's what I'm using for now. But we'll see, maybe in a few weeks, I'll switch back to Alfred or I'll try really that your friends is shared. Transmission, do I have transmission? No, I don't have that, yes. And then Figma, the desktop app. Postman for like interacting with APIs, uh, Table Plus. Uh, it's just a nice way to visualize or like look at database um, data. So sometimes for like quick um, looks at database, I just use this li like query directly. I mean run SQL queries directly. But for more like serious looks into data, where I have to look at a lot of tables and stuff, uh, I use Table Plus. Oops, and Daisy Disk, yes, we saw this earlier already. It shows you like the files in your drive, and like easily you can easily delete them from there. And then Docker. So the nice thing, uh, what I like with putting them in the script, is that whenever I set up, oh, there's no. Okay, let's get back to that later. So whenever I set up 
a Mac, for example, when I do a fresh install, um, it's very easy already for me to install everything. I literally just run one command and everything's set up already. So I just run this set up new Mac OS script and it will take care of installing brew, installing all the brew packages, installing the brew cask packages, installing all the node, I mean global node packages that I'm going to need and install OMSSH and then create the sim symbolic links. Uh, I use symbolic links. Where do I use symbolic links? So um, in, 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 in the Mac, um, we usually have the config files for like ZSH, Git, they're all stored in the home directory hidden here. Uh, but in my case, I put them in a the repo and then just create a symbolic link from the repo into the home directory, as you can see for these ones here. Um, so the, sim the setup sim link script just automates that for me. And finally, some Node.js scripts, I mean packages that I use. Um, so git open, <laughs> it's so simple. Uh, it just uh, opens a git repo whenever you're in a, in the directory. Yes, I opened some of that stuff. <laughs> uh, Viv so fancy, uh, actually I like this. Um, so let's say for example, I edit some part of the code here and save. And when I run git diff, uh, it shows uh, it's a different look. I mean, it's a different display for like than, than the usual git diff. No, I can show it. Uh, so it shows you like which, I mean, it's just git diff, but fancier. <laughs> uh, trash, cell i. Uh, so instead of running like rm, which um, deletes your file permanently, uh, it gets moved to trash. Then f kill. Um, allows you to kill processes that are running in your computer. So you can either search by, by, by name, like Google Chrome, or why can't you search Chrome? Yeah, somewhere, or by, or by port. If something's running at port 8000, you can just kill it directly from there. NPM check, I use it to update like the NPM dependencies of my projects. So I can just run npm check that you, dash you. Uh, it will check if like the NPM dependencies I'm using this project needs to be updated. So it shows here and you can easily update the ones that you need to update. Serve, uh, simple, uh, ser just serves the current directory or any directory you pass over an HTTP server. Um, lice, I use that for easily creating open source licenses. Generate a license, maybe MIT license. And let's say I give my name. And Here's my license, but I already had a license before, so it's fine. And then Yarn, of course, Yarn. Uh, currently, I don't have these. These are uh, Alfred plugins because currently I'm not using plugins, but we'll probably get back to that at some point. And uh, yes, one last thing, or okay, maybe a few last things. Uh, I use a lot of aliases or like ter terminal aliases a lot, just especially for git commands. So you usually see me like doing um, GS for git status, git push to main or master to like to push. So it just makes it faster to like perform git operations. So uh, these are, so there are some packages out there that already define git aliases, but um, for some reason, I find it. I find them difficult to remember. So, I just found find that um, defining my own aliases that I know that I added them there uh, I makes it easier for me to remember. So that's why I define my own list, and then some other aliases specific to Django. But don't need to know about that. The point is, I use a lot of Git aliases, and for my terminal, back to the terminal. Yes. This is iTerm with the SH and pure prompt, but I'm also also use I'm also using Pmux, which is like a terminal multiplexer. So I can easily like perform splits uh, for my terminal if I needed to. I can also create like new windows as they call it, or or are they screens something like that? But without really opening a new tab, 
so you can easily uh, browse through the different okay panes or windows easily so i tend to prefer this over um just item tabs and yes theme rc that's something that i defined a long time ago but okay sorry i clicked the wrong button um something that i defined a long time ago i don't exactly know what's in there already anymore but it still works for me so and it's like the config that i'm familiar with so whenever wherever i use vim i try to make sure i have this config otherwise i won't know how to use vim and other than that i think that's it uh what's that what answer here so git config yeah git config git ignored which is the global git ignore um CSHRC, let's take a look if there's anything interesting oh i already clicked it CSHRC. um yep uh, all i have in my CSHRC is like initializing CSHRC, some plugins and oh you see that i have a CSH theme here which is my name i used to have a CSH theme before but it's i don't use it anymore uh i use prompt i use the pure prompt and yes majority of my ZSHRC is just defining environment variables so <laughs> basically extending the path really um yes so i have setups for android node.js um for managing node.js versions i don't install node globally i use fnm to like manage diff different versions and easily switch between them and other stuff that i usually just comment out and that's it uh, all of these config files are symlink as i said automatically to my home folder so i don't have to like manually copy paste all each one of them but yes so those are for the dev setup maybe some few more things on my taskbar so i use one password for my password manager uh, and so this is also lungo lungo something uh, this is similar to caffeine that uh we have francis talked about earlier it basically keeps my display awake and you can set a time how long um i use copy clip um for some yeah i think i like paste more than this so i'll give it a try later uh currently it can only copy um text but uh how it works it, it keeps track of your history of the thick text that you copied and for like windows i, I use magnet and what else are here? Oh, this is the register. And this is like unsplash wallpapers, which I used to find cool wallpapers. So um, so I just, when, whenever like I'm bored, I just open this and then click on this um, icon several times and then just set it as wallpaper if I like it. And it gets applied to all the windows already. And I think that's all I have. <laughs> I don't use a lot of apps, so I try to keep like, uh, minim like install like a minimal amount of apps on my machine. Oh, one thing I I I, I remember um, copying from Kuya Francis guide is like putting my duck on the left. So it's been there forever. <laughs> so that's it for me. Yes. You have any questions? <laughs> Faye? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to try Lungo. Seems pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think I used Caffeine before on the, on Linux, but uh, when I switched to Mac, I just used Lungo. Um, FYI, Lungo, uh, Kuya Francis, he used Pure Prompt, right, by Sinresaurus. Mm -hmm. uh, Sinresaurus made, created Lungo, so OK, I'm going to use Lungo. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. So he's a really cool guy. So cool, cool. I'm gonna search for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to double check. Maybe I'm giving false information. <laughs> it's alright. We're gonna figure it out later. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Oops. Uh. Oh, Sinrisaurus also created Cap. We have friends. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yes, For confirmed. Cool he created Lungo. <laughs> confirmed. He wow. created Lungo. Yeah. Cap um, so yes. far is really great. 
Yeah. So I used a smaller like, tool. It's called uh, LiceCap, but it only captures GIF and quality is not very good. So I don't use it anymore. <laughs> yeah. The popular ones before was LiceCap and GIF Brewery. Then when I discovered Cap, I just switched to it. Cool. Um, yeah, probably we'll use Cap because, I mean, I don't, States, I don't find myself doing screen captures, so. But when I do, mm-hmm. I will. Inst- I will have cap now. I'll get it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Anything cool. else, Pay? Or. I think we don't have. I don't have questions. I don't. Uh, <laughs> there's also quest- I can't see any questions on the like Facebook and YouTube video. Okay. So. so. Okay. So if uh, that's it. Uh, That's it, I think. Thank you. We will you. not take much more of your Francis time anymore. <laughs> so we'll just start to wrap it up here. Um, your Francis, do you have any like last words, any plugs or something? Endorsements. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't really, I mean, I, I don't really enjoy promoting myself. Oh, but... daddy! <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's my <laughs> uh, If you want to check out the setup, guys, uh, you can check it out at www.macsetup.xyz. Uh, it's a work in progress. I think I'm going to figure it out how to make it open source so everyone can just fork it and make their own. It's currently built on Gitbook. So, yeah, I'll figure that out with Arno, maybe. <laughs> or so, yeah, <laughs> check it out. Yes. We'll, yeah, you guys who are watching, definitely check the guide out. Um, I pick up a lot of stuff from there. So, hopefully, you you also do. And so, yes, we'll wrap it up. Um, that's okay. One last announcement. Um, next week, okay, this is for like general announcement. All right, next week, uh, we'll be doing a hackathon with the team. Pia Francis, if you want to join, you're free to join. Uh, so we'll be like something different to like our regular what you regularly do, which is just sharing random tech. Uh, next week, we'll do a few hours of hackathon, so should be interesting, I think. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, should be interesting. And yes, that's it. so that's it. Uh thank you all for, for like staying with us if you're watching. And yes, don't forget like to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be doing more of these streams every Saturday, 9 p.m. But for now, that's it. Thank you and bye <laughs> bye. Bye guys. Thank you for your friends for joining us. <laughs>